Welcome to yet another edition of Hydro Geek Podcast, where I discuss about different aspects of uh, how informatics can be utilized for the problem solving and designing or uplifting of water resource development and management problems. Today I will discuss about uh, discuss about the drought identification and how uh, MCDMs are used or may be used uh, for this purpose. Although uh, till now the application of MCDM in this aspect is very rare. A few studies are there uh, where MCDMs are applied to identify drought. And for the maximum time, they have utilized the GIS along with MCDM to achieve their objective. And most of the objective revolves around the classification or special classification of an watershed into different levels of drought severity okay so mainly the existing studies concentrate on this aspect okay and some of the studies have also considered the vulnerability identification due to drought uh, and few studies have developed some indexes or indices to identify whether there is drought or not but uh, application of MCDM in these cases are very rare. So that is why this area of research where MCDM, that is multi-criteria decision-making methods, uh, can be utilized to identify drought vulnerability, drought-prone regions, drought identification, etc. drought-related activities, uh, such that adequate but optimal mitigation measures can be undertaken to prevent and to reverse the situation from drought to normalcy. As you all of you know that uh, drought is a phenomena where water becomes very scarce in that region and if for a certain period of time uh, that means for a season or some months uh, this condition uh, remains then it is said that this that region is facing a drought now you must not confuse the drought based region with arid regions Arid regions and drought uh, prone regions are two different things. In case of drought prone region, water has been scarce for a certain amount of time. And it may happen that later on in this uh, year, due to some high rainfall, the situation will reverse. But arid regions are those regions where already the soil moisture content is less than some threshold. And for a very long time, say three to four decades, it is remaining like that. So it becomes a, uh, from temporary phenomena to a constant phenomena and gradually it becomes the characteristic of the land. So aridity is a characteristic of the land, characteristic of the region. And drought is a phenomena which is most of the time temporary. And once the, uh, once the comfortable situation arises, the drought will go away. So here uh, drought can be two types. One is hydrological drought and another is agricultural drought. And in case of hydrological drought, due to the lack of rainfall, water is scarce. 
and uh, for a long, uh, for a certain period, so it is declared drought. And for agriculture drought, what happens? The soil moisture is scarce, not the water. Soil moisture is scarce. That is why plant cannot accumulate water, and productivity fails. Agricultural productivity fails, get reduced for a certain duration of time, and they are said as or identified as drought, agricultural drought. So. Many times when evapotranspiration is more compared to rainfall uh, for a long time, long time is for a certain duration. So that uh, region where evaporation is higher compared to precipitation and higher means sufficiently higher for a long duration of time, then it is said that region is going through a drought. Okay, so identifying droughts itself is a big problem where uh, the existing methodology on uh, basically use the expertise or experience of the engineers to identify the drought. And uh, Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, uh, defines drought as, as a condition, as a phenomena where water is very scarce for a certain period of time. Okay, so this the definition of drought is very also not very concrete. So there are lots of fuginess involved here in the definition of the drought also. But forget about that. We are here to discuss about as the MCDM techniques are very rarely used for drought identification or to classify a region based on its drought condition, how MCDMs can be utilized now in a very innovative manner such that some new results can be achieved. So some new project ideas can be developed based on this topic. This topic where M uh, it, it really MCDM is applied and the phenomena known as drought is extremely significant nowadays because of climate change. The impact of climate change is not prevalent and that is why uh, this uh, drought vulnerability analysis or classification of watershed with respect to drought or rather identification of drought is a very lucrative problem or important problem nowadays. So generally MCDM is not used for this purpose. I don't know why, but you as a student or as a researcher or as a scholar can play with different MCTM techniques and analyze their potential in drought related activities, whether to identify the drought phenomena whether to classify an watershed based on drought, whether to uh, this uh, drought vulnerability prediction. So there are many aspects in which you can utilize multi-guided decision making. Now why multi-guided decision making method or MCDM method? Because they are objective and they, are, they make decision making unbiased. Okay, and you can repeat that method. Because if you only depend upon experts or experienced people or stakeholders, change in those people will change your decision also. And also different people take decision in different manner. You cannot repeat that. You can copy that. You cannot copy that. So when you utilize the MCDM techniques like analytical hierarchy process, analytical network process, Electre, Promethe, weighted sum product, weighted product method, then what happens? You can repeat the procedure. So keeping it in view of that advantage and as drought is a decision making process where we decide whether there is drought or not, if there is drought, how much vulnerable the region is, if the, there is vulnerability, then whatever the levels of vulnerability exist 
in the entire watershed that we are talking about. So these different aspects or different objectives we can deal with in a more logical manner. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, accurate identification requires the evaluation of multiple parameters also to, to determine whether drought is actually occurring, or to predict drought, or to analyze the vulnerability of drought, and etc. But due to the characteristics of MCDM techniques, they can facilitate this identification in an unbiased manner. That is the most important thing, in an unbiased manner. Okay? So, let us discuss about only five criteria, uh, sorry, five idea that you can utilize to achieve a highly significant objective of drought. First idea can be the analysis of potential of different MCDM techniques in natural disaster response planning. MCDMs can be utilized in assessing vulnerability to other natural disasters such as floods, hurricanes, wildfires and including droughts. Droughts is also, drought or drought is also a natural disaster. Okay. And it not only can identify the natural disaster, it can also help prioritize the location of mitigative uh, measures required to be addressed and also the mitigation measures can be selected with the help of these sensitive techniques. Okay, so actually you can analyze the potential of different MCDM techniques in natural disaster response planning. Response planning means how we can mitigate the impact of the disaster that was faced by a certain region. Remember, by natural disaster we mean drought, flood, hurricane, wildfires, etc. So if you can include the techniques of MCDM in your policy decision, then it will enhance the resilience in the high risk areas. Suppose you are planning to uh, develop some uh, mitigative infrastructure in the most vulnerable regions. Now, which infrastructure to develop? Whether to develop a bridge, whether to develop a barrage, whether to develop a preventive wall, which one will be the most important? Now, if you can use the MCDM techniques, then you can get an unbiased decision. That is what is important. A decision which will not depend upon any human being because if you depend upon human being for a decision then that decision will change when the human being will change okay so this is the first idea that you can explore another one is impact of data availability model complexity and stakeholder engagement on accuracy and reliability of MCDM applications in drought identification. Look, to identify drought, you need data. So if your data is also scarce, it is very difficult to identify droughts. By data, I mean the precipitation data, the soil moisture data. Also, stakeholder engagement is very important. Here by stakeholder, I mean the farmers, the engineers, the policy makers, they're all stakeholders. So that is why availability of accurate and up-to-date data and the level of stakeholders engagement all play crucial roles in determining the accuracy and reliability of any method applied in identifying drought conditions. Now, in any method, you can now put MCDM also. Right? So, the, this idea is that you must analyze both quantitative and qualitative impact of lack of data availability 
all lack of stakeholder engagement and how it is impacting the accuracy and reliability of MCDM applications. And not only these two, lack of data availability and lack of stakeholder engagement. You, you, you also need to analyze the model impact of model complexity. How complex is the MCDM model that you are utilizing? If you utilize AHP, it is simple. You will, it, it, if you utilize weighted sum method, it is more simple than AHP. But if you utilize Electre, Promethe, they are more complex than AHP. So more complex the method, more computational infrastructure it will consume. And it will be more harder for a common man to understand the decision that is coming out of those models. So your idea of thesis or research can be to analyze the impact of data availability, model complexity and stakeholder engagement on accuracy and reliability of MCDM applications in dot identification. Right? So you can actually analyze how accurate or how reliable the MCDM results are when data is scarce, when model is highly complex and or there is very, very low level of stakeholder engagement. So this can be the second idea. Third idea can be potential of MCDM techniques with respect to other traditional methods used for drought monitoring and management. Now it is true that MCDM has the potential to outperform traditional methods in terms of speed, efficiency and accuracy of the results. Okay. And not only in monitoring of drought, but also managing the drought prone conditions. Okay. So, but the thing is that you must analyze the potential of the MCDM techniques. Okay. And by incorporating multiple criteria and considering various stakeholders' perspectives, MCDMs can provide a more comprehensive and robust approach to identifying and addressing drought conditions. This the approach will be robust, approach will be comprehensive, and approach will be unbiased. But yes, you must compare with the traditional methods also. Because if the traditional methods or results from the traditional methods are better compared to MCDM, then why you will use MCDM? But I know that it is not the case. But still, for the satisfaction of yours, for the satisfaction of your supervisors, for the satisfaction of the uh, reviewers, editors of the journal, where you will, you will try to publish this idea, for them, you know, uh, you must analyze the potential of MCDM techniques with respect to other traditional methods. And you can utilize various metrics like Spearman method, Friedman rank method. Then uh, we have Kappa coefficient, right? So there are multiple types of method available for analyzing the accuracy and reliability of MCDM techniques over the traditional methods for drought monitoring and management. So this can be a very good idea. Then comes the fourth one. Fourth one is impact of remote sensing and big data analytics on performance accuracy and efficiency of MCDM in identifying areas at risk of drought. Okay, so the data collected through remote sensing and big data analytics will influence the performance accuracy and efficiency of MCDM. Okay, so remote sensing and big data analytics can significantly enhance the performance accuracy and efficiency of MCDM. 
in identifying areas at risk of drought by providing real-time high-resolution data for analysis. These integrations allow for more precise and timely decision-making, ultimately improving the effectiveness of drought monitoring and management strategies. So there is an impact of poor remote sensing data, poor big data analytics on the performance of MCDM techniques also. That is what this idea aims to identify, whether there is any relation, if yes, then how much. Okay, and the fifth one, and the last one for today's edition, is application of various models in the application of multi-career decision making to address specific challenges in drought monitoring and management. Okay, so by utilizing different models within the framework of MCDM, such as AHP or TOPSIS, tailored solutions can be developed to address unique challenges in drought monitoring and management. These models will allow for a systematic approach to evaluating criteria and alternatives, leading to more informed and effective decision-making process. So this can be another aspect of research. Okay. A method within method, which I popularly refer to as hybrid methods, and how they can challenge the unique, uh, unique abnormality abnormalities of drought monitoring and management. Okay. So here what happened is, suppose you are using uh, the existing or traditional drought identification formula to find whether there is drought or not. Now if you use them MCGM techniques to, to predict the parameters of that method, then what, what is happening? Whether it is advantageous or it is not at all satisfactory. So this can also be a very good idea of research where different MCDM techniques can be hybridized with different traditional methods or rather different statistical methods and then the objective can be tried to be achieved although the performance metrics will say whether they are really better than the existing methods or when MCDM and the existing methods or other models are utilized separately. So this can be another very interesting research problem where you are analyzing the various hybrid models of MCDM in uh, drought monitoring and management. So that's a very good uh, idea also. So, you know, all these five ideas we have developed after analyzing and researching various literatures that is already published in the uh, online uh, repositories. And from analyzing the ideas, we found that potential application of MCDM in natural disaster response planning then impact of data availability, model complexity, and stakeholder engagement on accuracy and reliability of MCDM application in dot identification is the second one. Third one is the potential of MCDM techniques with respect to other traditional methods used for drought monitoring and management is the third one. Fourth one is impact of remote sensing and big data analytics on performance, accuracy, and efficiency of MCDM in identifying areas at risk of drought. This is the fourth one I have already discussed. And lastly, application of various models in the application of multi criteria decision making methods to address specific challenges in drought monitoring and management. So this was the, was the last one where hybrid MCDMs can be utilized uh, 
for broader monitoring and management and that can be that can yield better result than the previously you have found so the, all these five ideas can be explored in your ug courses pg courses and phd courses provided you have a basic knowledge on statistics your basic knowledge on data science you have a basic knowledge on mcdm techniques so i will suggest you few courses which you must go through and complete before uh, you try to explore these five ideas for your pg or phd or postdoc So with this I want to conclude today's edition also and remember to like subscribe or share my podcast if you has really liked it and if you have been enriched with some uh, pertinent information if you think that then you like it like my podcast then you share my podcast then you subscribe to my podcast otherwise uh, don't don't do all this because i i i want real feedback so that i can really develop my uh, newsletter or podcast okay and note that this podcast will also be unavailable after 7 days to a free member and if you do not want that if you want to access this podcast and other podcast and other blog, uh, blog uh, posts of the newsletters for your entire duration entire duration uh, for as much time duration that you have activated then kindly upgrade yourself to a premium membership uh, so that the all the contents of this news that can be accessible uh, throughout the time even beyond 7 days and if you want do not want to do that then at least become an affiliate of innovate as gumroad shop digital shop and earn money by selling educational products thank you and with this i will really conclude my presentation